It'll get you on both hands. I don't know how how it manages to do that. Now, I um I heard that the old timers they didn't really braid that much, so I've been trying to get out of that, or at least braid less, you know, to where it's just. Oh look, this has got some kind of bubbly. Well, that might be some kind of sheen, some kind. It's got like, you probably can't see it from there, but it's got the, uh, like a gold sheen to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm napping it all away. Hmm, could be interesting. Oh, it does. It does. Look at it like that. I hope you can see that. I didn't know that. <laughs> this was just in my bucket. Hopefully I get to make something out of this, because it looks good. I might have to turn the camera off so I don't jinx myself. Getting, getting there. Here's our end. Starting to get our cross section. That's what I always go for first. The cross section. And then, you know, after that. It all comes together. I might have to take, make this one. Take a little bit of time with it so I can uh, sell it up at the store. <laughs> oh man, some of them blakes, if they're bigger, I'm going to pick them up. If anybody knows what this is called. Steppy there. That's all right, because I got a long ways to go.
<laughs> yeah, I got that step out. You can see it's clear. Nice flake there. Doesn't seem brittle like that wild horse. I can actually tilt and drive. You know, I drove some flakes there. See it all the way across there. Oh, there it is. Now I got to start figuring out what I'm going to make. I was going to do the antler tools today. But just not. Well, actually, they're kind of buried under rock. Well, that's interesting. Gotta take my edge back more. Cause so I got a little bit of concavity. Now hopefully that's far enough I can get under it. If I could get one flake to ramp down that. Ah, oh, there we go. Now the problem I got is I'm really big and thin. <laughs> I'm pretty thin, so I'm going to lose. Might just call that good for now while I think about this. This definitely seems a little easier than the, the wild horse. The wild horse I couldn't drive drive flakes in, but this I am. Huh. 
How do you guys decide when you get to this? Just think the point right there. And, you know, I see that and I think, man, I could get a, if I cut it, get four points out of this. Maybe I'll make some kind of knife and take it up to the store. See, there's so much color right there. I just want to cut that piece and make something thin. And uh, that's the trouble I get in with front red. Just start looking at the colors. And instead of making what I want to make, make something that colors the colors point to okay. hammer time hammerstone weird because that smells like it's sparking. You know how the flint and steel smell? That's what that smells like. basically just going up and down because I'm trying to save I'm trying to save some thickness so I can you see how this pattern is over here I want to duplicate that on this side the other side you know <laughs> but if I get one side with the cool pattern I'm happy You need some thickness to do that. At least I do. You know. I had some people ask me why I why I have a YouTube channel when I'm obviously not the best snapper in the world. And it's, uh, it's because it's fun. It's fun, I, you know. And my channel, it's weird because my channel is really not supposed to be so much napping. But ever since I made this channel, the weather has just been horrendous. And uh, 
you know, basically stopping me from doing other builds. That edge is just too thick. When you strike your edge and it just crumbles away, even after you braid it, it's too thin. Well, 20 years ago, well, actually, eight years ago, I used to be what I would consider a pretty good napper. But, you know, life got in the way and I was out of it for a while. And when I come back, I got a messed up shoulder. So, in the side, So I really was hating on pressure flaking. I saw Jack Crafty using steel tools and so I started doing that. And that helped a lot. A lot of the things I used to pressure flake, I can now do with the indirect. Come on. <laughs> that edge down now I'm, I'm almost perfection now my flakes are bolder on this side than that side but you know I sell a good bit of stuff at the store that you know, carries my stuff. And granted, it's only necklaces and a few arrows. You know, I'm not making a living doing this. I was selling flint there for a little while. And uh, it actually took a lot of enjoyment out out of doing this for me. So I quit it. And it's a lot of work to go get that flint ridge heat treat it and spall it and make it and hope that it's good enough, you know, that whoever buys it can nap it and you don't know if they can nap. A lot of new guys, you know, hear old oh, Flint Ridge and and they get it and they find out. Uh, It's not the easiest thing in the world to nap. Some of it is. I mean, you know, the stuff that's uh, got a good even color. Looky there. 
think I'm, uh, I gotta do, let me get my little pressure flaker, wherever it's hiding, do a little bit of evening stuff out, but I gotta make something out of this. Mm. See, my problem is I don't work enough stuff like this to uh, to really know how to properly hold hold the pieces that are this big. Got a step right there. I gotta figure a way to reach in and get him or not. <laughs> but, anyways, regular obsidian is so much easier. And look, looky there. We got some sheeniness in there <laughs> on the other side this is just a preform I'm probably gonna leave it though because I'm pretty thin could work it more but if I make it smaller I could get this other side regular too but you know we'll have to see what I feel like later look we got edge to almost edge and edge to edge without an overshot. This is some nice obsidian. Five millimeters wide. Five millimeters thick. Not bad for a rusty old guy. <laughs> 